Hello and welcome to another video. Now, I grew up in the southwestern United States. This whole part of the U.S. used to be northern Mexico uh, until about the late 19th century. Um, now, the cuisine of this part of, this, of the U.S. is also very much influenced by Mexican cuisine, um, although it differs now in some regards. Uh, but one dish that you see across uh, all of um, all of Mexico today, as well as the Southwest U.S., is called refried beans or frijoles refritos. Now, refried beans is a bad translation. Um, re, uh, frijoles refritos actually means very well fried beans, so um, highly cooked fried beans. Um, and that's what we're going to make today. This is a very simple dish, and in Mexico today, it's usually eaten as a meal uh, on its own along with uh, tortillas. Now, you can make it in a vegetarian way, and I'll talk about this, but traditionally it's made with pork fat. Um, so let's go ahead and look at the ingredients. So for the ingredients, of course, we have beans, and these are pinto beans. Um, pinto beans are these sort of brown mottled beans like this. We have salt, um, and I haven't had a chance to um, render my lard yet, so I'm going to render the lard uh, before we get to that point, but since this stage takes about a day, no hurry there, but definitely lard. Um, if you want to use, if you want to make a vegetarian version, um, my best recommendation would be use clarified butter. Uh, in Germany, you can find this under the name butter schmaltz. Um, and it can be used in place of pork fat here. If you want to make a vegan version, then use something more like safflower oil, I think. Um, to this, uh, then of course we have onions, um, various kinds of chili peppers. I just decided, why not throw in a can of chipotles? And on top of this, we will put cheese. So I got some queso uh, Oaxaca. And uh, so that's what we're going to do here. Uh, now, these various kinds of chilies here, um, these are probably not the spiciest chilies, um, but they are. Uh, they will add a nice, very rich flavor to this. So, uh, some people add oregano, but I'm not going to do that today. So, the first step is to uh, soak the beans. So, I've taken these beans, I've put them in this bowl. I'm going to fill this bowl pretty full of water, and I'm going to let these sit for about a day. Um, and uh, so, then we'll come back tomorrow. Um, so I'm just going to uh, fill it, and this takes very little time, so I'm not going to bother. Um, so there you can see it. This is pretty full, and we want the beans to really soak up the water, because that's very important in the next stage. So we'll come back tomorrow once these are soaked. In the meantime, I'm going to render my lard. I don't really need to show you how to do this this time. Another time I will show you perhaps as a as a video on its own. So a day later you can see that these beans have swelled up nicely and so we're going to start cooking them. I'm going to pour them and the water into a pot. I'm going to cover them with water. Like so. Add some salt and put them on to boil. This will take at least another two hours. So uh, once they're really soft, I'll come back and, and we'll talk about next steps. So in this case, um, after about an hour and 20 minutes, um, these beans have reached a uh, melt in your mouth consistency. So I'm gonna strain them and set them aside. So now I'm gonna switch to a Dutch oven. And I'm gonna start by taking a nice spoonful of lard and I'm going to cut my onions and put it into that. So now the lard's hot, so now I'm going to add my onions. And into the onions I will add chili powder or chili peppers, in this case chili peppers. But only the dried ones at this point. If you want to add wet ingredients, add them with the beans. Um, I will salt it a little bit later. And uh, 
I'm going to fry these ingredients together. Um, I think you can add some other seasonings if you like, like oregano or cumin. Um, but today I, I'm not going to. So I'm going to add these together. Ooh, that's smelling good. And I'm just going to let this cook until the onions are getting translucent, and then I'll add the beans. So now these onions are cooking down a bit. They're definitely in the translucent phase, so I'm going to add the, um, I'm going to add the uh, beans to this mix. And I'm going to start to stir these in it first. But once they start to cook a bit more, I'm going to start to stamp them with um, with a uh, potato masher. Now it's worth noting at this point uh, you can add wet ingredients. I decided I wanted to add some of these uh, chipotles. Um, total um, Ooh, that smells good. But I'm gonna wait to add the chipotles until I'm uh, starting to mash these a little more. So let these fry a little bit in the lard first. And then I'll start to mash them and then I'll add the chipotles. And at first they're not gonna mash that much, but as they continue to cook and heat and stuff, they will. So we're just going to go ahead and heat and mash these until we have the consistency we want. And if we want to, we can add a little bit more liquid. We can add a little bit more lard. We can add, oh, we definitely need to add some salt. You can see that they're just starting to mash up a little bit. I'm going to add just a hair more lard, I think. Yeah, look at those mash up nicely. So. I am going to add some of the chipotles in a few moments, once these get a little bit more mashed like this. I'm going to cut the chipotles up a little bit. Start with just a couple. These will add a bit of spice, but also a richness of flavor. I think this needs more lard still. And I'll keep mashing these and I'll be back when they're a little bit more mashed. Now at this point, these are starting to become pretty well mashed, but they're a little bit dry, so I'm gonna add a little bit of water, and I'm gonna keep mashing. So finally here, I'm gonna add some cheese on top. Now in Mexico, they use cotija cheese mostly, which is a fairly crumbly cheese. Um, I originally bought um, queso Oaxaca, but I think it's probably not the best cheese for this. So I've decided to use an Emmentaler because Emmentaler, like Cotija, is a fairly uh, mild cheese. And so it should have at least a similar flavor. Maybe not quite the right texture, but it's difficult to deal with uh, ingredients halfway around the world. So I'm just going to put this on top. <clears throat> I'm going to uh, leave the heat on very, very low. And I'm going to put a lid on this and just let the cheese melt. And it's worth noting that this can just be reheated in the oven. So 
don't be afraid to make too much. And cold beans, of course, are great to make burritos and stuff. So, um, so I've gone ahead and put some beans and tortillas on this plate. There's really not much uh, more to this. Um, I could probably add a garnish of some sort, but um, maybe a piece of uh, like a, a, a parsley or, or something. But uh, I think this looks pretty good. And so I'm gonna go ahead and do the taste test. Um, this is the beans, homemade tortillas. Um, so this, this particular um, presentation will be used on both um, dish, for both dishes. And now for the taste test. First I'm gonna try some beans. All I can say is, wow, this is phenomenal. Um, way better than any um, store-bought beans I've ever had. Um, definitely, definitely worth making yourself. And I'm going to try some uh, with a tortilla. And normally you just take a piece of tortilla, fold it around the beans, pick it up and eat it. It really doesn't get much better than this. This is... Totally delicious. I strongly recommend it.